Hi there everyone, my name is Zach and welcome to my channel. Amongst other things, I'm a reenactor and a jouster and today I am making a response video to a video by one of my, the YouTubers that I follow uh, called Jill Bearup. I think I pronounced your last name wrong, I'm sorry Jill. Um, in your latest video, um, you were talking about armour from the Witcher and you asked for help in identifying what is wrong with Queen Calanthe's armour and uh, um, I've got some ideas myself so I thought I'd throw my hat into the ring as it were. Now if you're a member of the reenactment and uh, um, or, and or jousting community and you haven't seen any of Jill's videos please do go and check them out. Um, I really enjoy watching them because um, as a stage combat fighter she brings quite a different um, thought process to her fight reviews and things like that. And I think that we in reenactment can learn an awful lot from um, those kind of performance ideas um, because that's not something we tend to think about. Um, anyway, she's got loads more subscribers and views and everything than I do. So um, I would imagine most of you have heard of her, but um, if you haven't, then go over and check it out. Anyway, back to Queen Calanthe's armor from The Witcher. Now. Jill, in your um, in your video, you said you quite liked the armor. You thought it was pretty good, but there was something that felt a little bit off to you, um, and I completely agree. From a historical point of view, it seems um, based on late fifteenth, early sixteenth century German armor. The fluting is there. Um, the segmented tassets are also an example of uh, um, of armors in the period, but. The issue that I have with it is the shaping on the cuirass. Now, um, first of all, first things first, it is very, very flat. Um, generally, um, armour of that period in time is quite shaped. And you can see a really good example of this on the uh, Season 2 Nilfgaardian cuirass. It's, uh, um, it's very globose and sticks out from the chest an awful lot. Um, the Nilfgaardian one as well has got a really pronounced central ridge and that's also really useful for um, any blows that come in from the front, um, it sheds them off to the side. Now if you're looking at late 15th century armour, you are generally looking at quite rounded shapes and, uh, um, and you just don't see this on Queen Calanthe's armour. Another thing that you don't tend to see in historical armours is the way that it is overlapped. So the construction of it is not very 15th century. Um, there are a few examples um, in our, and one, um, one example that I'm aware of, of a breastplate that um, kind of underlaps going upwards. Most of them have the placard plate on top of the breastplate. So the, um, the lower plate goes on top of the upper plate uh, and so on. Queen Calanthes appears to uh, overlap the other way. So the top plate um, goes over the top of the bottom plate. Hopefully that makes a bit of sense. That's generally not what we're used to seeing when it comes to uh, historical armour. Although there are do, do seem to be some evidence that such things existed. We don't have many left and they weren't the norm. So that's probably ringing a few alarm bells for you there. Um, once we get to the 16th century, you do have more examples of that with the anima cuirasses, um, which give a lot more flexibility than the earlier um, 15th century ones. I'm just going to stop myself there because um, I can actually find an example that overlaps downwards. These guys are all still overlapping upwards. So uh, um, apologies for that. I thought I knew of some that overlapped the other way. But a when I was searching for um, photos of this, I couldn't find any. If you know of any, please let me know. But even with those, the shaping is very different. They don't tend to be as rounded, but tend to have a more pronounced prow down the middle, um, almost uh, like a kind of corset kind of shape. Um, and so while this, uh, while this cuirass is taking nods from 15th century armour, um, it is not, uh, unfortunately, um, as... Uh, as realistic as you might expect. Now, obviously, it's not trying to be an actual 15th century armour uh, or 16th century armour. 
but these shapes have a um, they have a mechanical reasoning behind them. The uh, the cuirass is projected from the um, the rib cage so that any impacts that hit the cuirass do not instantly strike onto the rib cage, which can cause winding even if it doesn't um, even if it doesn't dent the armor or go through. So removing um, the front of the cuirass from the rib cage allows for better breathing and it robs the uh, the blows of force. It also means that any uh, weapons that do penetrate have further to go. So um, with Queen Calanthe's armor, because it is so close fitting, um, if anything did manage to get through the cuirass, then it would go straight into her. Obviously, that would be an issue. Um, with historical armor, it is further away from the chest. If something penetrates maybe a centimeter or two centimeters, um, then it's not going to cause that much of a problem. Also, any of the metal which um, is pushed inwards um, in such an impact doesn't get lodged into the wound. Okay, so you won't have a tearing wound. You'll just have a neat weapon wound instead. Um, all of these are really good reasons to make sure that the uh, the cuirass and the breastplate stay further away from the chest. So the shaping on her breastplate actually looks a lot more like a backplate. Backplates aren't designed to take as much force as breastplates, and so they tend to be closer um, to the back than the breastplate is to the front. Your when your chest expands when breathing, it expands out the front, not out the back. So you don't need that breathing room. And the hope is that um, basically your back plate is absorbing the um, the light glancing blows that you might receive from behind instead of the heavier blows that you might receive from the front um, in a tournament or, or on the battlefield. So all of these things, I think, add up to um, to the kind of niggling doubt that you have in your mind about why this breastplate maybe isn't quite as um, as authentic as we would like it to be, or um, not authentic, realistic, I should say, realistic as we would like it to be. Well, um, thanks for watching everybody. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, thank you, Jill, for the original video. It was a great, uh, um, great little teaser. I, it really got my mind thinking. Um, and I've just finished watching all of The Witcher, so um, that was uh, uh, good fun to think about. Back to uh, uh, season one and the armor in that one as well. Thank you very much, guys. Um, do check out the links, do check out the merch, and like, share, and subscribe, all of those good things. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.